Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to your next lesson in quadratic equations. Our goal today is to discover the relationship between different kinds of roots of quadratic equations, the quadratic formula, and the corresponding quadratic function. So we're just going to try and tie all these things together. Do we know how many roots there actually are? Because you may have come into uh, um, contact in your homework with uh, sometimes that you didn't get an answer. Um, when you graphed a parabola, if it was above the axis, you said there's no x-intercepts, okay? So there's different kinds of ways, and you may have come across with some problems when you're solving with the quadratic formula as well. Um, we're just going to have a look. And so here's what we're going to do. You're going to watch me solve a few different quadratic equations, and then we're going to have a look at and see if there's any kind of patterns or anything here. So kinds of roots for quadratic equations, solve each of the following quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. So example number one, and notice I've got a blank there. We don't know what kind of roots these are until after we solve it. So I'm going to go through and solve this. Um, the first thing I have to do is rearrange it. It doesn't matter what, um, what method we're solving. You have to have it in standard form first. So you have to have it in x squared, then x, then the constant term order. So now let's use the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And let's see, what are my a, b's, and c's this time? Here's my a. My b is going to be negative 1. And my c is negative 2. So there's my a, b, and c, so let's plug it into the formula. Uh, negative negative 1 is positive 1, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared, minus 4, a in this case is 6, and c is negative 2. And that's going to be all divided by 2 times 6. So, We have 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared is 1. And now I have negative 4. And there's another negative in here. So I've got a negative here and a negative here. So I know two negatives are going to make a positive. So I know that's going to be a positive. And now I just have to multiply those numbers. 4 times 6 is 24 times 2 is 48. So 1 plus 48 divided by 12. Um, so that's 1 plus the or minus the square root of 49 over 12. We're starting to run out of some room here, so I'm going to carry on up here. So x is going to equal 1 plus or minus the square root of 49 is just 7 over 12. And so I've got 1 plus 7, um, which is 8 over 12. And the other one is 1 minus 7, which is negative 6 over 12, and those will reduce. 8 over 12 reduces to 2 thirds, and 6 over 12 reduces to negative 1 half. So there's my answer uh, for the first one. Now what kind of roots do we have here? Well those two numbers are both rational numbers, so what we have here are rational roots, and there are two of them. Two rational roots. Carrying on, I'm going to solve the next one. Uh, this one requires a little bit more rearranging, uh, but that's nothing we can't handle. 8x squared. Uh, I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides, so I get minus 8x. And then I'm going to add 1 to both sides, so I get plus 2 uh, equals 0. So what I did was I subtracted 5x and I added 1, and I subtracted 5x from there, that's where that minus 8x came from, and I added 1 to that, that's where that plus 2 came from. Now, even though we're going to use the quadratic formula, I can make my life simpler if I take out a common factor first, because that means that my numbers are going to be smaller, so I'm going to take out a common factor of 2, and I have 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Now, I can just disregard that 2 there, and here's my values that I'm going to plug into the quadratic formula. There's my a, there's my b, and there's my c. 
And now we're going to plug those numbers into the quadratic formula. Here's the quadratic formula. Again, every time you use it, you should write it down. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all divided by 2A. So what are we plugging in here? Uh, B is negative 4, so negative negative 4 is positive 4. Plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4. A in this case is 4. And C in this case is positive 1. And that's going to be all divided by 2 times A, which in this case is 4. Sheesh, there's a lot of 4s in that question. <coughs> so, 4 plus or minus the square root negative 4 squared is positive 16. And then out of this group of numbers here, only one of them is negative, which means that I'm going to have a negative in between the two of them. There's no second negative to cancel it out. And 4 times 4 times 1 is 16. So I've got 16 minus 16 in there, and this is, of course, over top of 8, which is 2 times 4. So looking at that, I have 4 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 8. So now I have 4 plus or minus 0. It doesn't matter whether you add or subtract 0, it's still going to be 4. So it's 4 over 8 or 1 half. So what it looks like we have here, what kind of root do we have? First of all, there's only one of them, um, and it is uh, a rational root. So we have one rational root, one rational root. But mathematicians are funny creatures. They would actually like to be able to tell you that quadratic equations always have two answers. So in this case, they say, no, there's still two answers. I have to both add and subtract zero, so I get two answers. It just happens that they're exactly the same thing. They are both one half. So they are actually, uh, mathematicians usually call these equal roots. Next. Uh, let's see this one. I need to subtract 3x squared from both sides. So I get 2x squared plus 3x plus 5 equals 0. No common factor, so I can just go straight to the quadratic formula. Uh, I've got a 2 is my a, a 3 is my b, and the 5 is my c. So quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. This case, I have negative 3, because that's a positive number, so a negative positive just gives me the negative. Plus or minus the square root of b squared is 3 squared. Minus 4a in this case is 2. c in this case is 5. All divided by 2 times 2. So that gives me negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9. And again, in this, in this group of numbers, I only have one negative. So since there's only one negative, it's subtract. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8 times 5 is 40. All divided by 4. And so what that actually gives me is negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 31 over 4. Negative 31. If you try punching the square root of negative 31 in your calculator, it's not going to like you very much. It will tell you um, that it can't do it. You cannot take the square root of a negative number because no matter what I do, if, if I multiply two numbers together, I get a positive number. So I cannot find any two numbers when multiplied together that will equal negative 31. You can't take the square root of a negative number. So this is not possible. So what we actually call this, we say there's no real roots. So we say no real. But again, mathematicians are funny this way. There is actually... Uh, two answers here, and they're not quite as funny on this one as the equal roots. There is a number system beyond the real numbers, 
uh, called the complex numbers. And the square root of negative numbers do exist in the complex numbers. And about all I'm going to do is tell you that those numbers exist. Uh, we're not doing anything else with them. So there are actually no real numbers, no real roots, but there's two complex ones. <coughs> and lastly, down here, uh, this is going to take some rearranging or some expanding and simplifying. So I get the 5 out front. I need to expand that squared bracket. So I get x squared minus 4x plus 4. And that's going to equal 26 minus 17x. Now I multiply the 5 through. 5x squared minus 20x plus 20 equals 26 minus 17x. And now to get those uh, this side to be equal to 0, whoops, 26 minus 17x. I'm going to add 17x, so I get 5x squared minus 3x when I add 17x to 20x, and then subtract 26, so I get subtract 6 equals 0, which must, looks a lot nicer to, uh, to us than what we had before. So now, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a, excuse me. And you don't need to listen to me talk about this answer. I'm just going to go through and finish this for us. And there is our answer, 1.44 and negative 0 0.84. And as you can see, there are actually two answers, and they are both part of the real number system. So we have two real answers. Um, so we have two real roots, but they're not nice roots. If you take a look at them, they're not very nice. They are, 129 is not a perfect square, which means that it's an irrational number. It goes on and on forever, never stopping, never repeating. So we actually have two real roots, but those roots are irrational. So um, we've got the kind of roots. I've just put a kind of roots up here. Now I'm going to split the screen uh, so you can actually see all of them all at the same time, um, what part of the solution uh, is different, are there different numbers in when we're taking a look at all of these things? Now, hopefully, you can see that it's the part under the square root sign that's causing us to have different types of answers. In this case, in this first one here, um, this 49, it is um, a perfect square. And since it's a perfect square, um, I only have, or I get a rational number. I get a nice answer. So what part determines this? It's the b squared minus 4ac, the part that is underneath the square root sign. b squared minus 4ac. b squared minus 4ac. And down here, b squared minus 4ac. Now, how does it determine it? Well, this one up here, this first one, 49, well, it's a big, bigger than 0, uh, and it's also a perfect square. This one down here is, in fact, exactly 0. And when it's, in fact, exactly 0, then I'm plus and minusing the same thing. So I get the same answer, and there's only one rational root, or we say equal roots. So b squared minus 4ac equals 0. This one up here, two complex roots happen when b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. When I cannot take that square root, then I have a problem. There's no answer. And the last one, when there's two uh, rash irrational answers, b squared minus 4ac is, in fact, greater than 0, but it's not a perfect square. Now, what do the parabolas look like? Well, if there's two rational roots, that means that it has to cross the x-axis. So it either looks like that or it looks like that. It crosses the x-axis. Um, this one down here, when there's only two roots, that must mean it just barely touches the x-axis. Oh, that one doesn't even, that didn't look like it touched. There we go. 
um, or it just touches the x-axis. So the vertex is right directly on the x-axis. Uh, over here, when there's no real roots, that must mean it doesn't cross the x-axis at all. And lastly here, this one, it's crossing the x-axis, but it's not as nice in numbers as the ones from before. Okay, so we have a chart here to fill out, and I'm actually going to leave that for you to fill out. Um, I've already given you all of the stuff that you need over in these questions. Um, so I want you to tell me what you know about the discriminant and what the corresponding function looks like so that you have it all in this handy little space um, as a summary of what we've just done. And so just to leave you off with just one final thought, if I want to know um, the equation, a quadratic equation that has no real roots, what I need to do is write down the equation of a parabola that doesn't cross the x-axis. So if I can write down the equation of a parabola that doesn't cross the x-axis, here's one. This one has been um, shifted up three spaces, and it also opens up. So it's, if it's shifted up and it opens up, then it will not cross the x-axis. And then instead of y, I have to put equal to 0. And so um, just do some thinking about that and fill in this chart. Um, with the information that we had before, and that completes uh, the kinds of roots video.